among the most respected brokerages in Mumbai, in India indeed, is most Motilal Oswal Securities. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's uh, August 29 to 31, is the three most important days for Motilal Oswal. So, on the eve of that big occasion, uh, which is the 12th annual investor conference of most, Mountain decided to visit Mohammed. Anuj and I have decided to in, uh, in, uh, invite ourselves to the Motilal Oswal head office where we have the brains trust of this company with us. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ramdev himself, Ramdev Agarwal, uh, Naveen Agarwal and uh, Rajat Rajgarya, the brains trust of Motilal Oswal with us to tell us about this all important seminar and of course uh, uh, the situation, the stock market situation in which we find ourselves on the eve of your very important seminar. But first uh, Ramdev, tell us about the seminar itself. You know you always make it big. But this time it's bigger than big. The biggest life insurance company in the private sector, the biggest stock yeah. exchange, uh, uh, the biggest uh, two-wheeler company and uh, the most important of ministers, Piyush Goel is going to be addressing. Yes. So first tell us how big is the 12th investor conference? Yeah, so <clears throat> every investor conference is becoming bigger uh, and it should be like that. And this, uh, this time, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a middle of this new government. And uh, Ache Din is still, you know, uh, uh, people are waiting and it is just about, uh, so people are, you know, uh, very uh, in an introspective mood to see what's happening here. Globally, there's a lot of gloom, uh, negative interest rate environment is there, uh, growth is a big problem, people are searching for yield, pension funds are likely to go bust, not, not being able to meet their defined benefits uh, for their uh, customers. So. Uh, so you know the uh, the search for growth is uh, is really uh, very hard, and uh, in that backdrop, India is one place which is looking to be very very interesting, and one that we have a huge potential. We are just about thousand fifteen hundred fifteen hundred dollars per capita, two trillion dollar. So two trillion dollar looks a little big, but per capita it's just about one thousand five hundred one thousand six hundred. So we have a l long way to go, and uh, we have. Uh, current account deficit, fiscal deficit, uh, inflation under control now, uh, good monsoon, new leadership, uh, ease of doing business being the theme of the government, developmental politics is uh, taking roots. I think very interesting times. Okay. You know, so in that backdrop, this conference is here. Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, that's interesting. You know, Ramde, last year at the conference, the Nifty was at the same level, the markets were at the same level, yeah. but the sentiment was different. The market was at that point sliding. Uh -huh. And now we have a rising market. Yes. So things have changed, uh, yes. even though the market may not have moved much. Uh, yes. But uh, w what's been the feedback, uh, the initial feedback uh, from you know your investors? I, I think Rajat uh, Rajat is more in touch with the customers on a day-to-day -day basis, so he would be able to tell you more about that. But as far as the domestic customers are concerned, where I am in uh, yes. touch with that, and I was telling you just now, there is so much of concern about uh, market being. You know, at a high level, uh, stocks are expensive, uh, uh, NBFCs are uh, through the roof and, uh, and hence uh, it's the time to take the money out and go for retirement types. You know, like a lot of guys are making a very permanent type of call and all. I've never seen this kind of, and product, I mean, markets have done so well and all the products, mutual fund products and all, they're all time high and this is a redemption in, uh, redemption because of high performance. You know, I mean, I understand redemption because of non-performance. But this is a time when people are uh, pulling out of from the market because the market has done very well. They are scared of, you know, uh, repeat of 2008. Have... People are scared of 2008 and all. But at current market cap of, say, 72, 73% to GDP, I mean, always market can correct by 10, 15%. But uh, I don't see any kind of crash or big, uh, big thing happening here. So that fear right now, at least domestic investors are kind of very happy that they have made money, but they are kind of withdrawn. They are withdrawing actually at, at the mode, either they are not buying or they are in the mood to redeem. That's the mood in the domestic market. I think Rajat can guide you about... Uh, actually, you know, globally you can make a case for doom as well. Uh, if there are negative yields and all-time low interest rates, they actually are factoring in a depression economy or a recession economy. Yeah. At the same time, earnings are also, you know, faced with their highest valuations. One of them has to give is the argument. Uh, what is the sense you are getting? Do we break out of this long period of consolidation on the upside or on the downside and why? Well, if you look at our earnings growth phases over the last 25 years, 
uh, the CAGR over this period always works to be 13 to 15 percent mm. but you typically get five years of 25 percent and five years of zero to five percent growth I think we have overlived this period of less than five percent growth for the last seven years you know we may be off by a quarter or two right but I think you can definitely start sensing that that strong double digit growth is just lying ahead right coming back to what Anuj just asked uh, Ramdeji about global investors mood I think uh, year after year you see foreigners continuing to pump money into India over the last 15 years with an exception of one or two years every year they have been net buyers most of the big traded stocks the majority of the ownership after the promoters now lies with the foreign investors right that's why many of the stocks keeps on hitting the limits so I think it's also a function of how much supply of paper that we can offer to global investors because somewhere the flows are also partly constrained by what what they can buy but the mood amongst the foreign investors for investing in India is very positive right now uh, that uh, acronym that you have made famous uh, QLGP quality longevity growth and price uh, let me pick up growth because that's the big theme that you are uh, banking on uh, you know you have always picked up uh, consistency of growth but if you looked at this year's performance let's take banks uh, because HDFC Bank is one of the uh, uh, first uh, uh, invited companies in your list actually year to date uh, State Bank has delivered uh, a higher return than uh, HDFC Bank in terms of stock returns only so would you now look at the economy facing sectors with a slightly different eye would you look at sectors that normally don't form in, come in your focus 25 or your focus 35 would you look at state-owned banks for instance I mean incidentally uh, just to put the records right we have a state bank of India okay. and all the way uh, from the top to bottom we stay down okay. so we have suffered with uh, state banks for, uh, fluctuations so uh, state bank is a very uh, very different case I mean it is 24 25 percent of the entire banking system I mean it's such a big rock howsoever uh, hard you push it will not go down you know eventually it will it will climb up so with that faith we have some allocation out there but uh, as far as the uh, you know secular growth stories are concerned in fact what is happening is this is really testing time for the which are good franchises particularly in financial sector and uh, even in other sectors because when the economy is slow which ones have those uh, uh, differentiated strategy or uh, uh, an ambition or extra work which can give you that extra bounce in terms of earnings 20 percent 25 percent 30 percent and that's why the companies which have quality franchise and a growth QG both are there and there are very few maybe 150 200 companies those companies are being lapped up and I'm not going to you know uh, we popularly say don't come in front of speeding truck so I'm not going to sell my uh, well running franchises and go for something which may become very good. And since we're talking about a train that you boarded, uh, one of the trains was uh, uh, Infosys. I don't see any of the big IT companies uh, being uh, invited or uh, being part of the conference. Uh, uh, what's is your view changing? I mean, after the the commentary from Infosys, Ramdev, because we spoke about it in our yeah. show as well, that you've taken a big bet on Infosys. Uh, yes. Is that changing My a bit? Portfolio is one thing. Conference is yet another. Conference is sell side conference. We have to reflect the mood of the markets. Okay. You know, mood of the investors. I mean, ultimately, what people are wanting to listen. You know, I mean, it's an ultimately limited uh, uh, 15, 16 tracks and uh, in that you have to accommodate all kinds of guys yes. and uh, the new ones also say like you have now the first time insurance is coming up. The best and the biggest insurance company yes. is presenting. So that will give, I mean, it's a large sector anywhere in the world. In India, it's small. So that opens up a new mindset. I mean, even I'm eagerly waiting to listen to uh, SDFC Life. Uh, what I mean, I have met all of them, but uh, yet I would like to listen in the public forum. What exactly is the opportunity? How things look? And what are the uh, what are other guys saying? What is the experience in other parts of the world? So it's a very large country, a young country where insuring uh, life insuring possibility is massive. We just about started. They have broken even barely in the last two three years. So the runway is very long if there is a profitable growth. So. Uh, like that, uh, which are the other uh, companies which are coming for the first time, the sectors? So we have a panel where the whole new bank licenses yes. are participating, you know, so that's a new segment which is now coming up. Yeah, I mean, like this, I mean, one of the biggest contribution of Dr. Rajan was opening up the banking sector for the private sector and finally he has even put it on the tap. 
So this actually it is not being talked about as if it is you know something one of the things which they have done. But it's a huge revolution. I mean we we'll get to see after 10 years, after 20 years of limited opening, we have seen the market cap of uh, HDFC, ICIS, Access, uh, Kotak being much bigger than you know 75 percent of PSU banks. What is going to happen in the next 10 years? These banks are going to become very large. So uh, he was so talking you know, about that. If you if you just look at the whole market and the growth outlook over the next five seven years, the two big sectors one is financials and second is consumption, right? And the consumption uh, paradigm is just getting more and more broader, right? So that's why we have uh, United Breweries, Piddy Light, somewhere Bajaj Auto do benefit from the consumption theme. So you know the conference has some of these very interesting companies and the CEOs uh, sharing their views on what the next three to five year growth outlook for them is looking like, right? I think this conversation is getting into a very interesting turn, but we have to take a break. They've just started talking about the United Breweries and the Pidalites. Uh, they will talk more. We are back in a minute. Welcome back to this special chat we are having with the brains trust of the Motilal Oswal Securities team ahead of their 12th annual investor summit. Anand. Oh yes, in, you know, in fact, before the break, we were talking about uh, some companies, uh, Rajat, and uh, you know what's interesting is let's talk about some of them, like like PD Light, for example, or Ultra Tech, for example. They have all four of them, you know, QG, LP. But uh, you know, the, the problem with some of these stocks has been that you always have to pay top dollar to buy some of these stocks. Uh, do you think? will still remain in that kind of a market where you'll have to pay premium to buy some of these stocks well um, i think one thing that has that this market has taught in the last five years that anything that looks expensive on a 12 month basis if as a growth continuing over a five year basis still continues to get re-rated right and most of the leaders in their respective categories have set new benchmarks of valuations right so i think we also have to be more flexible when we look at valuations because uh, these are these are very exciting times for many product categories right we never thought cement in the early stages of a recovery will start trading at 200 dollar plus ev per ton but maybe that is going to be the new benchmark right but if you are clear that the next five years demand is going to be better than the last five years right don't just get off the bus because the valuations have because what you will buy next may be cheaper but may not have growth left in it fair point well naveen uh, uh, what is your sense about uh, uh, you know consumption companies which are at the moment second rung i mean you know you have the asian paints and you have the page industries would you rather put incremental money in these consistent 10 year stories or in stories that will be the next 10 years where do you smell the next 10 years in the consumption space? Yeah, uh, so basically in India, uh, most of the consumption categories are highly under penetrated, which is the story for, let's say, the leaders. So for instance, Asian Paints in Paints or United Breweries in Brewing, United Spirits in Alcoholic Beverages and so on and so forth. Uh, but you're absolutely right, while these companies will surely continue to do well and exploit their leadership position as we close the penetration gap, I think there are many interesting discretionary consumption categories that are now emerging which can potentially do exceedingly well. So for instance, there are a plethora of home improvement companies which are now starting to do well. I mean, ceramics is a category that is now getting more and more organized and reforms like GST will drive market share in favor of these organized players uh, which are themselves under penetrated categories. So we believe that while the market leaders will certainly continue to do well as the under penetration in these categories is bridged but these emerging categories can do far better in terms of growth rates, in terms of re-rating exactly the same way that Pedilite and Asian Paints have undergone re-rating in the course of the last 10 years. On Infosys, IT, because you know, now that it's not as loved as it was say, last year and yes. so that's reflected in the conference, but your personal call, uh, do you think it's now offering a good entry point? Uh, the complete advantage of India in the tech field cannot be still undermined, okay? Now, uh, it is also impacted by whatever is happening within the industry, but the global economy is slow mode. And BFSI space, which was one of the largest client base, 
you know, they have, uh, after 2007, they have been suffering big time. I mean, uh, one bank or other, something other collapses. And they are very large clients of these guys. So clearly, that is uh, posing uh, its own challenge. Second is the kind of a new technological development, digitization. Uh, that's opening opportunity as well as it is cannibalizing the older models. So where does it stand? I mean, uh, it's an it's a open question in the sense that 10-12% uh, growth is still not uh, denying. 10-12% dollar growth is not bad. There are very few companies in India which are talking about 10-12% volume growth uh, to have in such high quality franchise yeah. with a high cash flow, transparency, high payouts. So, I mean, uh, I think uh, Infosys is uh, sub-15 times 2018. So these are, I mean, uh, I mean, one of the crazy thing about the market is that right now all the large pools of profits are grossly undervalued. I mean, they are they are available at sub 15 p multiples. Look at all the oil marketing companies, HPBB, IOC. All of them are five, six, seven. I mean, depending on whose number is what, you are in six to eight p multiples. Yes. Uh, you look at Reliance. That's about just about double digit. Yes. About I maybe even maybe less than 10. 10. Yeah, but then, are you confident about the 75 rupees EPS for Infosys, for example? Because that 14 times will depend on whether that EPS number is achievable or not. Three, two, three rupees here and there, not okay. much. I mean, the P multiples cannot move. I mean, if I am saying uh, 50, it might be 16, but it's not like 26 or 30. What I'm saying is that uh, large pools of profit. Uh, this time the uh, rush for mid cap is so blindingly high that uh, people are just missing out and leaving the large franchises which are actually going to remain in on face of ours in the next five ten years they are the companies which are going to take us forward so it's a very uh, uh, i mean every time market is different but this point of time all these companies tcs infosys apka uh, access uh, icici reliance uh, uh, everything is like a very reasonable payment levels. Naveen, you know, of course, one more speaker would be Rajiv Bajaj uh, from Bajaj Auto. And at Motilal also, you've always liked, you know, two-wheeler companies. It started with Hero Motor Corp, which of course uh, was always an iconic investment for you. Aishar Motors uh, uh, and now, uh, of course, Bajaj Auto as well. Uh, uh, you know, the, the big question is, among the these three, which ones do you think the investors would end up making most money over the next five years or ten years? Actually, what's ended up happening is very interesting in the two-wheeler sector. While two-wheeler can be generic as one single thing, each company has ended up carving out some niche for themselves. Yes. And the modes are so invincible. So, for instance, in the premium bikes, Royal Enfield has it hands down. And it's almost impossible to beat them. As far as the export side is concerned, while Hero is trying hard to get into that segment, Bajaj Auto is so firmly entrenched, although the global slowdown and country-specific issues are impacting their own exports, but Bajaj, is, Bajaj has a, a fairly deep moat as far as that business is concerned. Uh, turning to scooters, you have HMSI, which is you know by far the leader in driving almost all the incremental growth in the sector. Uh, but given the, uh, given the good monsoons now, after two bad monsoons, uh, uh, Hero is obviously you know well penetrated into rural India. So I think while they seem like one category, one set of companies, I think all four have very dominant uh, positioning in some segment, some moat which is difficult to break into for each other and they become kind of unique companies you know, in them. So Bajaj itself uh, we think is very well positioned because of their focus on motorcycles on one hand, exports, uh, three wheelers, very strong balance sheet. Uh, you know, strong dividend payouts. Uh, so we continue to like the stock very much. Okay, finally, all is not well with the wellness industry. Which pharma company will you pick? I mean, we have, uh, we have Sun Pharma, we have Lupin, we have Ajanta Pharma. So, uh, I think pharma industry, again, I, I think it is very untapped opportunity. I think still a lot of uh, growth is ahead. We had some uh, issues with the FDA inspections and all, but I think a lot of relief is there in last four, five months, six months. A lot of relief is there. They have done their job of telling them, boss, uh, you, are, you guys are going to become big, so gear up yourself with the quality and everything. And uh, these guys have also taken notice that yes, we have to do that. So I think, uh, uh, but opportunity is very unique to India. Now whether uh, it falls in company A or company B, that's the only issue. So I am very clear that uh, this opportunity is a growth oriented opportunity and we are going to get even newer companies which are coming in this sector, say like Jubilant uh, you might have seen very recently, so uh, Ajanta we saw 2-3 years back, so we are going to see emergence of new companies 
in this sector because it's a very wide spread sector Alchem is in your portfolio as well yeah so a uh, lot of these companies yeah. which are first time starting to in, uh, export to us which is the world's largest and most uh, precious market uh, whenever they start their mix changes their profitability changes and the valuation changes here Okay. Final well, question on Ramdev before we, yeah. we, we let you go. Uh, uh, ahead of this conference, do you get a feeling that uh, uh, we are we could be at the Goldilocks scenario where you know the foreign investor investment is going to continue? You've seen you said that you've seen some domestic redemption because of profit booking more than anything yeah, else, uh, yeah. but that will also come back. Uh, uh, do, do, do you think we are at, at a stage like that? I think it is waiting for. I mean, see, investor psychology you cannot understand. I mean, in the, in the very short term, what will I mean, probably you people are driving their psychology. So, <laughs> when, whenever you push them to buy, or someday they start buying, because foreigners are not going to relent. The kind of interest rate scenario I am seeing, I don't think we are going to see much lull in that side. I mean, what a little they are buying, they will keep buying. So, and then after uh, terrific monsoon, GST, uh, all kinds of ease of doing businesses every day being announced. I think like railway barrage being merged with uh, main budget means the, there is no resource constraint for railways. You can take up a lakh crore project, two lakh crore project, whatever the general budget sanctions. So a lot of things are being planned. So I'll be very surprised market actually goes down significantly from here for a, a prolonged period. 5-10% correction, anytime it can happen. But whenever this thing happens, when foreigners are buying, as well as Indians are buying, I mean, I think we are going to see some new highs. Okay. Well, that was the trailer from the Brains Trust of Mothira Loswal. In the days to come, we are going to get you a lot more enriching interviews from this conference. Thank you very much, uh, Rajat Ramdev and Naveen for joining us. Thank you.